How are you? Good afternoon. Let me acknowledge uh, my colleagues who are with us today. We have uh, County Executive George Latimer, who you will hear from in a moment. And I want to thank him very much for his help and his cooperation. We have uh, Senator Peter Harkum, who is a uh, new to the state Senate, but he's uh, well experienced in uh, Westchester in the Hudson Valley, and he's been extraordinarily helpful in the planning for this storm. I want to thank the Senator very much. You'll hear from him after the County Executive. Uh, Michael Copey, who is our new Director of Emergency Management. His first week on the job, first storm. Uh, we wish him good luck or an early retirement. Just kidding. We have Major General <laughs> Raymond Shield from the uh, Division of Military and Naval Affairs. There are about 450 National Guard who are ready to be deployed if we need them, and we want to thank them very much. Acting Superintendent of the New York State Police, Keith Corlett, who will also be nominated to be the uh, Permanent Superintendent of the State Police, and John Rhodes, who's the Chairman of the Public Service uh, Commission. As everybody knows, we have a, a significant weather event that is developing, and we're in a transition area uh, for that uh, storm. It's more complex and more problematic than some storms we've dealt with before uh, for two main reasons. Uh, number one, it is a, a snow event, uh, less snow in the southern part of the state, New York City, Westchester, uh, more snow in the Hudson Valley. But that's combined with high winds and very low temperatures and a possibility of icing. And the ice is the, uh, the, the most dangerous element of all. But snow, high winds, uh, frigid temperatures, single digits, some forecasts say the wind chill could bring us below zero, uh, and the possibility of icing. The mid-Hudson, the higher north you go, the more snow is expected. Uh, about 14 inches is forecast in, in the upper Hudson Valley. Goes down to one to three inches in Westchester, New York City, and on the Long Island area. But as I mentioned, the wind, high winds are expected, and frigid temperatures, and possible icing. Uh, the icing is, is more probable on Long Island uh, and in the Hudson Valley. But again, we're dealing with forecasts, and the forecasts uh, aren't written in stone, as we've learned time and time again. Uh, so we have that situation. Second situation that uh, compounds uh, the overall storm is this is a statewide storm. It's a very large storm band that will come through the entire state, move up into New England. Normally, extreme weather events tend to be isolated in parts of the state, one region or two regions. That allows us to deploy resources from other parts of the state to the affected area. Uh, so when we've had storms in Westchester and New York City, we literally will bring equipment from the North Country, from Buffalo personnel to the, that affected region. This is the entire state. Uh, it starts in Buffalo and literally goes to the tip of Long Island. So uh, we need statewide deployment. Uh, now, we have increased our equipment and our capacity and personnel. Uh, because we've had such a pattern of extreme weather, we will have 5,000 personnel deployed. As I mentioned, another 450 National Guard who will be ready to be deployed if we need them. There'll be about 3,000 pieces of equipment available. Uh, and we're coordinating very closely with, in this case, uh, Westchester County, the other counties, uh, New York City, emergency management. So everything is coordinated, uh, but uh, we don't have the advantage of being able to redeploy equipment across the state the way we normally would. Uh, we've done a tractor trailer ban uh, and a bus ban. Uh, one of the lessons we've learned the hard way is one tractor trailer jackknifes on a highway and it backs up everything. Uh, 
so we did that ban, we put it in place, it's in place now. We notified trucking companies and bus companies uh, a couple of days ago, so they had notice about this ban. So none of the trucks or buses will be caught uh, unaware. Uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna have to watch this storm. Starts with about 14 inches of snow in the higher part of the Hudson Valley. Uh, reduces down to New York City and Long Island. But this region is right in the ice band. We don't know uh, if we'll have significant icing in uh, Westchester, New York City, or not. The ice, as I mentioned before, is the worst of these. Uh, and we've seen this before. Ice on tree limbs and tree branches. The branch breaks, it hits a power line, the power line comes down. And now you have the problem of the storm compounded by a lack of power. And we've had too many situations where the lack of power has been uh, unacceptably long, where it's taken days, if not weeks, for the power companies to get the power back on. We have John Rhodes with us, who's in charge of the Public Service Commission. Public Service Commission regulates public utilities. Public utilities are franchises, licenses of the state. Uh, and they have a duty and an obligation to the state. And they are on full notice uh, and firm notice that I expect them to be ready to handle storms that we now expect to develop. A storm like we're talking about today, uh, in the past, we didn't have these complex situations. In the past, in New York, you never had hurricanes, you never had typhoons, uh, the floods that we've seen. We now are in a different uh, period of weather patterns. That's a fact. Extreme weather is a fact. Uh, and we've been experiencing it. I expect the utilities to be ready to handle those storms and the aftermath of those storms have the equipment, have the personnel, have the expertise, period. That's what is expected of them. Uh, I understand this is a new challenge. That's, but just the way the state, uh, state government understands it's a new challenge, and we upped our equipment and personnel, et cetera, we expect the same from the utility companies. We have penalized them in the past. Uh, so I believe they have gotten the message. I have said to them, if they are slow on managing the storm or the recovery of the storm, uh, their licensing is not a God-given gift. It's granted by the people of the state of New York. Uh, so if they don't perform, they could potentially lose their license. Uh, we have been in contact with the utility companies. Uh, they assure us that they are ready, they're fully staffed. They are already bringing in backup crews from other states uh, just in case the icing situation develops. And those other uh, states have, under what's called a mutual aid agreement, have sent their utility trucks and crews to New York. Uh, so uh, we're doing everything we can uh, on that level. More than anything, we just have to watch what develops now. We rely on the forecast, uh, prepare for the worst, but uh, hope for the best. And we have prepared for the worst, but uh, you, still, you still don't know until the storm actually starts to develop. And when I say this is the transition region, from the mid-Hudson, the storm changes as it comes down south and out on Long Island. The snow drops, uh, the temperature uh, uh, gets uh, somewhat better as you get towards New York City. But again, the big question is where is the icing? And how severe is the icing? And that's what would trigger the power delays, uh, power outages, et cetera. Uh, we, we will have thousands of emergency personnel out. They will be working, they're working now, they'll be working all through the night, they'll be working all day tomorrow. Uh, Unless you really have to be on the road, uh, 
it is better if you are not on the road once the storm starts, not just for your own personal safety, but uh, we're trying to get the plows and the trucks moving. If one person goes out and gets stuck, now someone has to go out and, and help that motorist. And uh, that puts someone else uh, in the line of danger and it backs up the entire uh, situation. So if you don't have to go out, don't go out. Uh, luckily, it's a weekend. It's a holiday weekend for many. Uh, people don't have to go to work. So uh, especially with the frigid temperatures, you have to be very careful. If you get into a uh, minus 5 degree with the wind chill, minus 10, uh, that is a health and safety uh, concern. And uh, the, it's not the weather where the children should go out and play. Uh, you can get uh, hypothermia very quickly. So it is a serious situation, and if we all work together, uh, we will make the best of it. We've been through worse than this. We've done all the preparation. Uh, so we'll see what Mother Nature actually has in store for us. But uh, she's thrown us a few curveballs over the past few years, and we've handled it fine and we'll handle this one fine also. With that, let me turn it over to the County Executive and again thank County Executive Latimer and Senator Mark Harkham for their work over these past few days. Uh, one thing we've learned, it's all in the preparation for a storm. By the time the storm hits, if you try to get ready for the storm once it hits, it's too late. You had to have everything done and planned and in place and coordinated before. And we've been working on this for days. Uh, many people have spent many hours on conference calls, but uh, we, we are as well prepared as we could be. And uh, I want to applaud the Senator and the County Executive for that. George Latimer. Thank you, Governor. <coughs> We owe great debt of gratitude to Governor Cuomo. He and his team uh, that is here today, Major Copey and the other professionals here, have worked very closely with Westchester County in this facility, state facility for which the county's emergency operations center is based downstairs, and it gives a great degree of interaction. Uh, I think the most important thing that the state has done is in anticipating this, taking action well in advance. Governor talked about uh, his executive order earlier on to ban tractor trailers and uh, buses and so forth from our interstate highway system that allows those of us at the county government that has responsibility to mesh very neatly in there. So that, that type of fore, uh, forethought is essential in order for us to get through this. At the level of county government, we have some very specific responsibilities. I'll bullet them very quickly. Uh, in operating Westchester County Airport, the airport uh, will remain open. Uh, we'll close it as may be necessary. But the truth of the matter is most of the commercial flights have been canceled. We advise anybody who is planning to pick up somebody coming in or planning to fly out to call the carrier and make sure that the flight is still scheduled to arrive or depart. As you can imagine, this is a very slow time of the week, Saturday night into Sunday morning. We don't expect that much air traffic to begin with, but uh, it will be treacherous out there. And the county airport <coughs> is the third busiest airport in the state but it's also one of the smaller airports, so it would be better for you to defer your travel plans until tomorrow if you're flying. Uh, we're responsible for the Beeline bus system. Again, we're on limited service for Saturday night, Sunday, and Monday. As the governor said, this is a holiday weekend, so there's much less traffic. We are now on snow routes, which means that certain inclines, hills across the county, Nodine Hill and Yonkers and some other ones, primarily along the western side of the county, uh, we don't use the same uh, traditional bus stops that we do under normal services. For those people that have to go out, uh, even in the reduced bus service, uh, be prepared for the snow routes, and then also be prepared, depending on what happens out there on the road, that there may be diversions that, that will be necessary. And uh, the best strategy, as the governor said, is stay home if you don't have to go out. If conditions get sufficiently worse, we will shut the Beeline bus system down, and we will broadcast that uh, to our friends in the press. We'll use social media and all the other mechanisms. Because we expect very deep cold weather, our County Department of Social Services is tasked with making sure that everyone who is homeless or uses a shelter is sheltered uh, and, and inside during these very cold temperatures. Our, all of our centers will be open 24 hours, which is not the normal circumstances. We are in code blue, which is a codification where we reach a certain temperature outside, and uh, all of our personnel will be there to make sure that people are inside overnight tonight and tomorrow night as this weather drops. All of that's very serious. 
Westchester County Police is tasked with policing the parkways of Westchester County, Hutchinson River Parkway, Sawmill, Cross County, the Bronx River Parkway. They will be out there to assist in any accidents or any distressed drivers. But again, the governor said it very clearly, if you're not out there, then that reduces the amount of concern that we would have because our police officers put themselves in harm's way to deal with a, a distressed driver. Hopefully we all use common sense and that will all work together. County is directly responsible for the Bronx River Parkway. Uh, it has been pre-treated in anticipation of the snowstorm. We'll be prepared to plow the Bronx River as necessary. Uh, we may close the Bronx River from time to time in order to properly clear it out. Uh, so people should look for those uh, uh, notifications and, and be prepared for alternate routes if necessary. Uh, the state DOT and the state thruway authority represented here have long since had their action plans in place to keep the thruway clean. Uh, as the governor certainly wants us to make sure that the county road near his house is clean, we're happy to have the thruway cleaned by my house. So we work together between the two levels of government. We both do what we have to accomplish tonight. Uh, I'm still hoping to get to Mass tonight so I don't have to do it tomorrow morning. Uh, but uh, in any event, uh, we've worked very hard, and, and I want to compliment as well our state legislative colleagues. Uh, I'm going to introduce Peter Harkham, state senator from the northern part of the county, because they are many times the eyes and ears out in the community uh, at community events. Uh, and I would say this, this is a weekend where we're honoring Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. There are a lot of events scheduled. Please call in advance to make sure that the event is on. Some may be canceled, some may be postponed. Uh, but call ahead to find out whether those events are, are ongoing starting uh, tomorrow. And with that, Senator Peter Harkham, our uh, good colleague who represents the northern part of Westchester County. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I want to thank uh, Governor Cuomo for coming here to the 40th Senate District. His presence here uh, means a lot to the people, knows that the state is concerned about their well-being. Uh, but more importantly, uh, the coordination between the state and the governor and County Executive George Latimer is, is remarkable. This building, this facility is remarkable. Behind these doors, every state agency, uh, the utilities, everybody is represented. And downstairs, the county has their OEM. Everybody is here in one building, and, and the planning has been impressive. Um, I I'm, I'm, uh, also wanted to talk a little bit about um, what the governor said about the utilities. I've, I've been working storms for uh, over 11 years in the lower Hudson Valley, and this is the epicenter uh, from here north of lengthy power outages. A week at a time is not unknown and uh, not uncommon, and, and people are, are fed up with that. And as the governor said, they're on notice to have a certain level of professionalism and planning uh, and, and people should expect that if there is an outage, uh, that their utilities prepared to get that back. So I've spoken with the utilities. Obviously, the governor and his people have spoken with the utilities, and uh, they, they will be held to account. Uh, lastly, I want to thank the, the, the other partner in this are the local partners, uh, the, the towns and the villages, uh, their highway departments, their volunteer fire departments, their police departments. My office has spoken with, with all of the chief executives of our towns and villages in the 40th Senate District. They're prepared. Um, it's, it really is a partnership between the local, the state, and the county. And, and it, I just want to reiterate at the end what, what the governor said and what the county executive said is if you don't have to be out, stay home. You know, if you work in an emergency room, understood. You've got to get there. Anything else, please stay home. Allow the professionals to clean the roads. And once the snow stops, you may think it's clear. It's not. That's when the, the temperature plunges and the melted snow from the salt becomes ice. So please, wait till people say that it's safe to go out, stay in your homes, and if you have a true emergency, you can dial 911. But you should also be uh, assured to know that the state and the county and local officials are well prepared for this storm event. And now we'll turn it over to the governor and questions. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Senator. Any questions for myself, the Senator, the County Executive, any of our colleagues? The, the county has uh, emergency facilities that the County Executive can speak about. Uh, but again, uh, I understand Mother Nature, and I understand the difficulties 
uh, of a storm that brings icing, and there's a practical reality to this, right? Uh, the ice forms on, on trees and on bushes, and you have a, a, a limb collapse that takes down a, a power wire, and it's hard to get to that power wire because it's in the middle of the storm. Uh, New Yorkers are understanding people, and we're reasonable, rational people. Uh, I'm a Westchester resident. Uh, so we get that. Uh, we get the consequence of a storm. What is unacceptable has been the delay of these utility companies, not in the midst of the storm, but not having the resources to then fix the damage and fix it in an acceptable period of time. Uh, I've, uh, as a resident, I have... Uh, I've been without power numerous times. I'm not going to complain about the snow clearing on my street because the county executive is here. He's in charge of that snow clearing. So I'm fine with the way the snow has been cleared. I'm not fine with what the utility companies have done. And as I mentioned before, they're on notice. Uh, they've, had, they've been on notice for days. They have represented that uh, they're ready crews are coming, but we are watching, and we will be helping them also. County Exec, you want to talk about any emergencies? Yes, the, the emergency centers uh, will be activated uh, once we see what the impact is of power. Uh, we're going to be monitoring uh, what the responses are, both the Con Edison and the NYSEG areas. NYSEG represents roughly about 20 to 25 percent of the county in the northern tier. They've had some greater difficulties over the last couple of storms. Con Edison, the bulk of it. Mo in most cases, the emergency centers are the local senior centers in each community or well-known community centers will be interacting in this facility with each of the uh, different municipalities of Westchester County and we'll announce uh, each of those that are up when necessary. And if we have a particularly large need, we do have the county center located in the middle of the county to serve as a backup service where needed. Anything else? Great. How frustrating? It is very, very, very frustrating. Very few parts of this job are not frustrating. <laughs> the, uh, I once made the mistake, however, <coughs> of saying the uh, weather forecast was wrong. I was then barraged with criticism from weather forecasters from all across the country. So uh, I don't say that anymore. That's why I say there's a variance between the forecast and what the reality can be. Uh, it is a symptom of the extreme weather, right? Uh, because there are very variable circumstances. We've had storms where uh, the weather forecasters all predicted that it would hit downstate, uh, Superstorm uh, Irene. And we moved all the equipment from across the state to the New York City area. And New York City was fine. And upstate New York was devastated. And meanwhile, we had redeployed assets from literally Buffalo down to New York City. Uh, so, you know, you, you deal with the information you have. Uh, and then you add in a factor that it could be even worse. So you prepare for the worst. Uh, and you're right. New York City, they're talking about possibly one to three inches. Uh, would I be shocked if it was six inches or nine inches or ten inches? No. The snow accumulation, however, is not the major problem. The major problem would be icing. And we don't know yet where what they call the ice line actually is. Is it in the Mid-Hudson? Is it in Westchester? Is it New York City? Is it Long Island? And the icing uh, is an exponential uh, multiplier on the difficulty of dealing with the situation. So that is, that is just part of the challenge of this operation. You get the best information you can. You know from past experience, sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. So you use it as a guide 
but I don't use it necessarily as a predictor. And we add in a variable factor that it could be worse. Okay? Thank you very much.